I'm Kathleen Oberick. I am a certified master gardener with the University of Illinois. I also teach, I did teach, at um, Richard J. Daly College for 15 years and Moraine Valley Community College in Payless for 22 years. And I do these programs at different libraries as you do see. I also do it for garden clubs and I do home parties. So if you have a party and you want some entertainment, I'm not a clown, but I can entertain you in, in various aspects, teaching you how to grow things. So we're today, we are going to be fascinated with not only succulents, but miniature succulents. Growing it small, smaller to the smallest. And I'm going to first refer to my sheet. I was here two years ago and I did not have a handout. So this time I'm prepared with a handout. I'm going to recommend a few books to you and they are like the second paragraph recommended books. Deborah Lee Baldwin has three books that are excellent for growing succulents. And Gardening Simplified Succulent Container Gardens, Designing with Succulents. Each one of those really helps you understand how to grow different succulents, either inside or outside. The, um, if you wanna learn how to create different vignettes or little gardens, then I recommend Janet Calvo's books uh, and also Betty Earle's books. One is on fairy gardens. Those are all excellent books. Some of the older books will tell you the botanic names and um, if that's important to you then you could get some of the older books that just say succulent gardening and they actually will tell you what the names are. Um, they all grow the same, so if it's a cactus or a sedum, they all require the same light nutrients, and we'll go through that in great detail. Today, I will talk about, we're going to, I am going to be demonstrating making a patio garden, and when I do that, I will talk about the details to making that. That's the largest volume. It's a 24 ounce container so it is the largest one for miniatures miniatures when you do succulents outside obviously you plant them and they have the whole earth to grow on um, and the fairy miniature garden and this is the one right under the arc lamp and if you see let me pull this out for you this is a 16 ounce container and it has the little fairy chair it has a pond for our little turtle and an arbor of course a pathway and of course our little miniature plants with our little miniature flowers that are in there this is bugle jade and if you have this as a large plant it could be quite a big plant. At a conservatory, like at Garfield Conservatory, it's probably as big as this room. It can be very huge. So, this plant, grown in a four ounce container, look at the size. Compare, it's the same plant. The more soil, the bigger it's going to grow. We still want to keep it miniature because these leaves can be very, very large. Now you see it has a trunk, but it's not woody. It's not a woody trunk. It is still what you would call herbaceous. Succulents never have, do not have woody tissue, so they'll never be tr like tree, a tree. Okay, so this is the fairy garden and our little fairy um, chair there and then we have the 10 ounce the Zen garden this is a Zen garden and we have this doo -doo 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 figurine in the, in the middle of it 
Also, this is another jade plant, and there are small sedums that are growing around it. This is the only cactus that I work with, and it's a mammillaria, because if you touch it, you won't prick yourself with it. Go ahead, touch that. See, no pricking. If you ever have ever touched a cactus plant, you know you're gonna get the little prickles in your finger, and oh, does that hurt. Sometimes they're very hard to get out. And then I have very miniature plants all the way around the cactus. It's gonna stay looking like this for about a year, even two years. It could grow slightly, but you really in miniaturized gardens, you don't want it to grow that big. You wanna keep it small. So this is your Zen garden, then your <coughs> itty bitty gardens. Now your itty bitties are the most popular because they're grown in four ounce containers. Now these are both four ounce containers, both of them, okay? This one is higher, this one is shorter and wider. Now, when you look at the container, something that is taller, you're gonna water less rather than something that is wider and shorter. So you kind of have to, when you feel this, okay, you kind of feel, well, when do I water them? And you will learn when you have them how often you water them. And they will look a little funny if you kind of overwater them. And you will know right away that there's a difference in the color, so you're just gonna water less. Um, it's really hard to kill a succulent plant, so be careful when you're buying your miniatures. Buy it in a facility that is growing them under lights or in a lighted room or with supplemental lighting, and they should water them. They're not plants that you don't water. They're not plastic plants. You, they are living plants, and you do have to water them. So these are your four-inch miniatures, itty-bitties. And then the three ounce and the cube garden. This is a three ounce container and it is in a cube. And all the way around it are the succulents and in the center are very miniature, little, unusual. They are a very dark burgundy color sedum. So they are hybridized to have that color. So I love the blue green. Mm -hmm. And after the Kew Garden, we have the um, Micro Mini Garden. This is in a one and a half to two ounce container. So there it is. And I'm just putting this in a really cute little votive lamp light container, not light. I'm thinking when you put the light, it really shines through the container. Can you see how pretty that is? And it shines up onto the plant. And I decorated these little containers with stick-on plants. And you have a squirrel in there and a little bee. So yeah, you can decorate these little, little guys. This happens to be the same genus as the jade plant. It's a crashula, but it's a different species. Lycopoidioides and uh, pseudolycopoidioides. So those are the botanic names. Okay, so this is the uh, micro mini, and then you've got teeny weeny. <coughs> this is about a one ounce container, and there are actually about seven plants, same genus, in there. They're really, really tiny really tiny and here's a little miniature drip tray that goes with it so it's a lot of fun you know getting these little plants and looking at them and making your little gardens i have the importance of drainage every single one of these has drainage holes so if you're going to get something that is plastic you could get like an ice pick and make plastic holes in if it's a soft plastic. If it's a harder plastic, like this little teeny tiny, it's a real hard plastic, you have to drill. So it's just have to get a drill and a small drill bit and then drill into it. Um, 
If it's a soft plastic like this, then you would just drill, uh, take your ice pick and put holes in it. Okay, so that's very, very, very important that it has drainage holes. Growing mix. Succulent and cactus like a 5.6 to 6 pH. That's on the scale. The, um, you have a pH scale that goes from 0 to 14. 7 is in the middle. It's neutral. So they like it slightly acidic. So when you're choosing your growing medium, you're going to choose something that's a little acidic to keep them happy. I have been at programs where they use charcoal. Now in the books that I suggest you to read, it clearly states do not use charcoal in the mix. It's too alkaline. So that raises your pH and that can kill your succulent. They don't die right away. They die actually, uh, they start to die if you get a healthy plant. Let's say you buy it at the store and it looks healthy to you and something wasn't right at the get-go, they can die within a few months. And it's nothing really you did wrong. It's just that either the mix, they put charcoal in the mix or they put sand. Now, play sand. You don't use play sand. And I have been at programs where they use regular play sand. Play sand is salty because it comes from the beach. And it's going to be salty. So you never use play sand. If you do add sand, you have to use what's called torpedo sand or number two sand. And that you would get from some building outfit and it'll come in a big bag, big heavy bag. I think it's 50 pounds, maybe 25 pounds you could get it. But it's called the number two torpedo sand. Your mix is very important. What you're growing it in. Um, I use, this is my mix, 75% Pro Mix by Premier, and you buy this at Menard. And it come, you can buy it in a small bag or in a big bag. I buy it in the two cubic feet. I use it for all my house plants, but only in for cactus, I only use about 75%. Um, its primary ingredient is Canadian sphagnum peat moss. Now, Canadian sphagnum peat moss has a pH of around 5. So it's already acidic. So that helps with um, the acid requirements of succulents. And then I use 25% turfus. And I know you haven't heard about turfus. And I'm going to pass this around. And I give you all the websites. So if you want to get some of this stuff, you can. So this is what turfus is. So instead of sand, I use turfus and feel it. What it is, it's fuller's earth. And when it's heated at about 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit, and it forms these granules, these granules will stay that way. They're not going to go back into clay. It is also, um, and what it is, is it provides airspace and it also absorbs some of the water in case you water too much okay um, it's also let's see if I have here oh it's got a few different names but um, their website is www.turfus.com and you can get some more information about that product algalite it's actually called algalite now there was one book I read and they refer to turfus, but they call it algalite. And if you don't know what that is, and you can't look it up in the dictionary, that just goes over your head. Okay, so the common name is turfus. Uh, it also says, um, let's see, profile. Profile is another name. Optional, if you're going to use it in a really, really small container, like your itty bitties or your teeny tinies, you might want to put a little bit of soil moist in there. Are you familiar with soil moist? Okay, soil moist actually comes from, I like the one that comes from JRM Chemical Company. You could buy it at a garden center. And what it is, is it has water holding capacity. So if you don't water it, say for a month, it will forgive you because it's got that reservoir. Okay, so have you seen anything like this ever? 
Nobody's seen anything. Okay, so this is Churfus. So now you have. Um, you can also buy core. Have you heard of core? C O I R. It is actually, that has also good water holding capacity. And that is made from the coconut, the outside of the coconut. And then they shred that and they sell that at the garden centers. Never plant in a dry plant. Your, your soil must be moist. So here is the soil with all of the stuff that we talked about. And I have it in my good old, and, and somebody said, you know, oh, we're gonna have ice cream today? <laughs> so this is what it looks like, and it's not dripping wet, but it is wet. You can put your finger in there. See if you could put your finger in. See, it's moist. It's moist, but it's not sogging wet. But you do have to have it wet hid, okay? All right, so that is, and you could see, wait, I want to show you. Also, can you see the profile in there? Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Did you notice that? Okay, so there's about 75% of the premier Canadian sphagnum peat moss. It's just a regular potting mix. And the other 25% is going to be the profile or the turfus. So that is your mix. Um, and again, I'm repeating planting water succulents when you're going to up plant them. Say, okay, so you're going to get this plant, and I like to put it in these clear containers because you could see the roots, and you don't see any roots here because they're too young. They're too young yet. And this is only about six months old, and it really hasn't grown too much. It just kind of stays there and looks pretty. But when the whole thing gets filled with roots, then you're going to want to transplant that just like you would any plant. And this could take, depending on where you have it, this could take a year from now. This could take two years from now. This could take three years from now. I can't tell you. Every grower is different. Every person that's going to grow things grows them a little differently. Your home is different. Your lighting is different. The way you water is different. Um, and then you would want to transplant it. You don't want to transplant it in something that's really big. You want to transplant it in just something that's a little bit bigger. So if you take something like this, you might want to transplant it into this size container, or you could actually up to a four, four ounce container, and that would be perfectly okay. Um, now your, if you don't want to make your mix, say I don't want to make that, I don't want to bother with it, a good, alternative is the cactus mix by black gold don't get the cactus mix by miracle grow get the one by black gold uh, it's sold at garden centers the ingredients on the packaging is perlite or pumice or cinders bark compost and earthworm castings to that I still add 25 percent potting mix to that I still do. Now when you're planting, you water your succulents well before planting. You're going to clean off any dead leaves, cut off any leggy um, growth. You're going to moisten your growing mix. And what I do is I don't add fertilizer when you are transplanting or planting. What I do is I add a, a growing hormone. And the one I like, and you use this for, I use this for all my plants not just for the nutrients that I'm going to recommend to you. I use for all my plants in the house for growing seedlings. I initially water my plants with a solution of KLN and that's the rooting hormone. And then I, these, I will top dress it with uh, turfus and you're going to see what I do when I plant this. And again, if you want to use sand, Use torpedo sand, never use play sand. When you're watering your plants, because you do have to water them, you can mist them from the top. So you could get one of these nice little misters at the dollar store, or if you have it from Windex, make sure that you clean out really, really well. 
and you're going to miss them from the top or you could get a drip tray and water them from the bottom so i can put like this one this one i do have a drip tray because it just fits so perfectly in here i can mist it from the top misting kind of dusts it off a little bit but you don't want to really pour water over this so it's misting from the top or you put water in here then put your container in and watch it soaks it up real quickly then all of these plants already are pre-watered and you can see how heavy it is feel how heavy you'd be surprised yeah it's very feel this heavy huh you didn't think it would be so heavy so it's it's quite filled with water you might want to water this you know in check it in a week check it in two weeks if it's still heavy if you water from the bottom it's just not going to take any more water up and you'll still have water filled in here wait about 15 minutes and say okay doesn't want any more it's, it's filled it's full of water it's turgid um, these containers I get from my butcher don't use containers that ever had meat on them you know get ask them for an extra tray and they'll be happy to give you one if they sell it to you um, I buy them oh I don't know I'm doing children's programs so if I buy you know 10 of them they sell it to me for uh, five cents each because I buy it in more volume and I said tap water there's a little asterisk down at the bottom um, none of you have are you using salt to sweeten your soften your water you're just using your municipality you're just getting it from the tap and it's not salted like if I you know teach at the rural communities Moni Manhattan they're still on well water and they do use a softener if you're using a softener you're gonna have to buy distilled water regular distilled water don't get nursery water get distilled water okay now we're going to talk about nutrients the nutrients i'm going to talk about are the same for all the plants npk is a fertilizer nitrogen phosphorus and potassium never use miracle grow on your house plants it is very high in urea nitrogen it can be as high as 20 to 30 percent you could use miracle Gras on your lawn and it gets it nice and green fast okay now miracle Gras does have less urea in their shaken feed but you can't use that for house plants have you ever used miracle Grow shake and feed how many of you are using miracle Grow? all right I the name the name sells it all just never use it on your house plants okay too high what is urea nitrogen what is it it's what it sounds like it's urine so if it is organic and you might say well that's okay if it's urea not necessarily so now it's usually from chickens or some other little animal that they take it they process it but it's still urine so you have to be very very careful when using that on your house plants you want a very low urea nitrogen very low so the first one i'll talk about is foliage pro foliage pro is really the top of the line this is the top of the line fertilizer you use a drop per cup one drop you know an eyedropper go to walmart they sell two eyedroppers okay and uh in a container and you literally put one drop per cup for your house plants or for uh, your miniatures and this has how much urea none your analysis is in the back 
It has nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, and all the micronutrients and macronutrients that a plant needs. And it's called Foliage Pro because it's specifically designed for foliage plants, or like if you use it for outside your coleuses, caladiums, anything that has leaves only. And um, this size, you can get it from the company. This size sells for $15, and I do have three here if you want to get that and try that for your different house plants. I use that also for my plants outside too. And there, that will last you years. Yes. You put a drop. Now, for the succulents, you get a cup. A cu you know, a cup with a little spout on it. You know, the measuring cups. I'm talking about the plastic measuring cups. You fill it with tap water, warm tap water, and you take an eyedropper and get one drop per cup. Now there's a formula there if you're using it for a quart, like for outside, you use I think a quarter teaspoon. If you use too much, you won't burn your plants because there's no urea in there. There's not. What's burning your leaves of your plants is that high urea nitrogen. But because this has none, this won't burn your plants. You can actually use that every time you water, but not, not succulents, but your other plants. Then there is Bill's Perfect Fertilizer. And I do have a bag of all the stuff that I'm going to talk about. And it is only $10 if you want to try the different things. Okay, so this is spray and grow. This is Bill's Perfect Fertilizer, and this only has 2% urea nitrogen. Same thing. This would be a drop per cup. Now, you don't have to use all of these on the plants, but I just want to show you, you know, try all these out for yourself. Uh, my son grows things too, and he likes certain ones over. He says, my plants respond better to spray and grow than anything else. So this is Bill's Perfect Fertilizer with only 2% urea. And then Nature's Source. And this is Nature's Source. And what's in here actually is enough to make two gallons of water. Say I want to try this on my plants outside. So you would use this in a two gallon um, watering container. But what I would do for my house plants is I just put this in another container. And again, this is one drop per cup. Everything is one drop per cup. So, you know, if you're watering it once a week, I might water it with um, nature source one week. And then next week, no, nothing, just plain water. And then next week I would go to um, the Foliage Pro then nothing and you have to kind of see how your plants respond in the winter I do I don't feed it with NPK these are the two that I recommend for uh, with NPK so you've got the foliage pro you've got Bill's fertilizer and you've got nature's source these I have all nitrogen phosphorus and potassium but there are other nutrients that don't have they are nutrients that have the micro micronutrients in small small amounts and they are spray and grow spray and grow is exactly what it sounds like you put it a drop this i measure a cup in my spray bottle i put a drop and then i would spray my pan plants the foliage and then you just pour the rest at the bottom to t let them take it up from the bottom um, is anybody familiar with anything that I've talked about so far? Okay. Maybe because the stuff is all on the web. I don't know. And you know what? When you get the growing magazines, if you're really interested in that, you're going to start getting growing magazines. And uh, they will be talking about these different products. Okay, so that is Spray and Grow. And then we have Super Thrive. And Super Thrive comes in a drop pack and this is 50 drops per 
container. I use a little more than this. And this has kelp in it. And kelp has 0.5% nitrogen, which is very minimal. And also it has vitamin B. So if you smell it, yeah, no, I, did you have children? You had children? Yeah. <laughs> and, and remember the, the pills that you used? You had to take those horse pills during pregnancy? It had the B vitamins, oh. and, and this has the B vitamins in it. This is what makes it so special. Okay. And let's see what else I have. I have some literature on there. I also do have a bag of turfus in there. So you kind of know, well, what is this that she's talking about? And I also have something that you probably wouldn't think about. And I do have the note on the bottom. And it talks about your other house plants. When you buy a house plant, they always say, you know, put it on a side in case you bought some insects with it, and you usually do. And what is the biggest problem with your other house plants? Don't tell me you don't have any problems. <laughs> the biggest problem with house plants is fungus gnats. You might think they're fruit flies. And they're not fruit flies, they're fungus gnats. Sometimes you buy white fly. And white fly is just what it looks like, white fly. Well, you've got to eradicate these things. Don't buy chemicals. The best is birth control. This is birth control. And I have a plastic around it because it's a sticky fly trap. And it comes in a container like this. And there are, how many of these? They're, they're large. Three traps. And they're as big as this container. And they're real sticky on both sides. And I'm going to pass this so you see what a fungus net is. And what I do is I cut them in little pieces like this. This is something that you can get from the floral shop. I attach, you could do a popsicle stick, but this seems to hold it better. I have a little votive glass, and then I put a foam in there, and I put them by my other house plants to eradicate um, the fungus gnats or white fly. And you say, okay, I don't have any, but I open up my windows in the summertime, they fly in. And, you know, if you see the little guys, and you're going to see them by your water, by your kitchen, and, you know, you kill them. You go, oh, it's a fruit fly. So this, that's how small they are. The, the, the ones in the back, that's just leaves that went on there. But I want you to see that and pass that. These sell at all the nurseries for around $9. But I have the whole kit for $10. So it's a real, real good deal to try something different okay so you do have to feed your plants and you want to feed them something that is healthy and nutritious and will keep them healthy light any window that you put the plants in will survive even north but then you will water less on the north side. You're going to water more on the south side and on the west side because it's brighter light. In the winter you're going to have to give it supplemental lighting and that's where the arc lamp comes into play and it's a regular desk lamp. The bulb that you buy is going to be important and it's the CFL bulb and um, LEDs are real popular now. The problem with LEDs and they're good bulbs, what are they? Heavy heavy. The CFLs are the curlicue ones. C means compact F fluorescent L light. And I really do like them. Menard still sells them. Okay. And you want to get best light bulb is at the very last bottom here. And this one has the 60 watt equivalent and it's going to give out 900 lumens. Lumens is the amount of light that is reflected off of the bulb. You could get 100 watt, which is, um, gives off 1,600 lumens. Okay, 
so you LEDs also gives off lumens anywhere from 900 to 1600 but you're gonna have to be careful when you buy a lamp because it's got to be heavy enough secure enough this is a very good arc lamp and it would be able to take a LED bulb okay are there any questions before I put the garden together any questions How yes when they're light you know what you just have to, these are all turgid and they're very very heavy and they're very filled with water but they will when they evaporate or use up the water in there they will become light then it's at that point that you will do it the more light the more you're going to have to water yes okay now we're going to do the patio garden and I just kind of have it set up and this is special for the 50th anniversary so we have the gold the gold furniture and I made this gold furniture I made it out of flat wire and also this is all aluminum furniture okay so I'm gonna put this off to the side on one side okay and this I'll put off to the other side. We're going to start with the container. This container originally did not have any drainage holes. Can you see the drainage holes? Nice big drainage holes that my husband drilled into. Okay, these are really big drainage holes. Inside I can see this better this way inside I have a landscape fabric I know that they have plastic landscape fabric get the woven one and I'm just gonna put that inside okay so that my soil does not ooze out you you bought houseplants that the soil just oozes out because it does have Canadian sphagnum peat moss in there so it's going to ooze out so I don't want it to so I'm going to put the landscape fabric now all these other guys all these little ones this one has a landscape fabric that one has but all these little ones they just have the regular holes the real little holes that you uh, with an ice pick that you put in now this is very light and I want it to be a little heavier so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some pea gravel we all know pea gravel. I rinsed it in water. Uh, so you just take a strainer outside and then you just keep rinsing until nothing comes out and it's very clean. I'm not gonna put all this in. I'm just gonna put a little bit in so that it's a little heavier. So if the cat or dog, you know, come by it, they won't knock it down. Okay, now. Then I'm going to start adding my medium and I'm going to put gloves on because I really want to press down pretty hard. So I'm going to put my mix in here. And as you say, use real sophisticated equipment. This is a, my grandmother's spoon. So this is what, you know, is all just, you know, funny looking and everything. It says, oh, this is such a strong spoon. Okay. And then I am going to just keep adding this in. Now, in between, you're going to start pressing it down. Not so hard. I had a student that was a police officer, and I says, press firmly. She had it down to a pancake. She was so strong. But I'm just going to press it firmly down. <coughs> now, these are the plants that I'm going to put in it. So this is called Chubby Fingers, and I'm going to have it on one side, and then I'm going to have a sedum on the opposite side. Okay, so let me still put some more in. I'm going to do this for children um, at Park Forest, I think, and it's going to be next Saturday. So we're actually going to be doing a fairy garden. <coughs> so if you want to come, you can.
can. <clears throat> and I always tell people, I says, you know, just come because sometimes the kids don't show up. And, you know, you could do it then. Oh, it is for children. You have to bring a child. Okay, so I'm, I'm really loosely packing that in. And I'm going to make a hole in here. And I'm going to put the plants in. Now, this is grown in a three ounce container. And I'm pressing at the bottom because you don't want to plant your plant lower than what it is growing originally. Okay, now let me test it. A little more. And some of the little um, leaves are going to fall off, and that's okay. Don't worry about that. Don't worry. Let's put that in. Let's put that on the side. A little more. Okay, press that in with your fingers. You're pressing it and always press it in and I'm pushing it back a little bit. Okay. And then this one, which is going to be opposite. Oh, wow, these are huge plants. Hmm, am I going to do my walkway, huh? God bless you. Okay. And then just keep adding soil. As you add it, keep pressing it in. Keep pressing it in. It's okay if you got it a little on the plants because we're going to clean it up. You would be surprised how much this takes, too. This does take quite a bit. And you see, I'm adding it in smaller increments now because I want to press it in. So the lady that has the jade plant, um, I would definitely, you know, kind of take that apart and see what kind of soil is in there. And if it does have some sand, you can tell play sand by how smooth and small it is. So that could be the problem. So you may want to change the soil um, around the roots to save the plant. And then you could always add profile to the mix. A fresh plant. I, I would start it with completely clean soil, different soil. And I'm, I'm suspicious that they just put regular potting mix in. You do have to put some profile in or sharp sand or as the books you know, recommend the um, perlite. Ah! Didn't want to do that. Okay, just keep pressing it in. See how much soil this takes? Pressing it in slowly. The plant is not going down. I had the plant at the proper height. What's going down is the soil surrounding it. This should be it. here. Okay. 
and I'm initially when I plant it I do it a little higher than the rim of the container because the soil compacts with age it gets um, I don't want to say used up by the plant because it doesn't get used up but it becomes more compact it seats itself into the roots with the roots of the plant and this is by no way water yet Now can you kind of see it's a little hill and taper down? Okay, now just kind of get some of this off of the container. And next, over this, in all my plants, all my succulent plants, I top it off with the with the profile. I top it off with this. So it's in the mix and then it's on top of the mix. This actually is kind of a nice indicator. If it's dry, it's going to look like this. And if it is moist, then it's going to take on a darker appearance. Okay, so now I'm going to put the profile, I'm just going to mix it all the way around here. Also, I have noticed something with my other house plants. When I add profile uh, to it, the fungus gnats don't like to lay their eggs. And that's the whole thing. Fungus gnats, that's all they want to do is mate. Mate and lay their babies. Oh, I thought I would be able to put the little jade in, but actually I can't. There's just no room if I want to put some other little decorations in there. Okay, so we have two nice plants in here. And again, I'm going to integrate the profile into the surface, into the surrounding surface. At this point, I think, at this point, we could add the pond, and it's always nice to have a little pond in the garden, and my little pond is a shell, a little seashell, so we'll put that over here, and it hasn't seeded in yet, so it's going to be falling out, whoever wins this, I know it's going to fall out for you because it's just not seeded in. It will eventually. I'm going to make sure. At this point, I'm going to spray it. Now, I'm using plain water because my mix in here has got the rooting hormone in it. So, I'm going to wet this all in. In fact, let me put, take the shell out. I'll put that in a minute. Going to keep misting. I want this to penetrate. Are there any questions anybody has? Where did you get those plants? I grow them. Oh. Okay, I start, I buy succulent plants and then I start miniaturizing them. Okay, I will talk about that in a minute here. Could you brought that up. 
because we'll talk about miniaturization. To buy the plants, I'm going to pass out some literature to you so you can appreciate miniaturization. Um, there is an art out there, it's a Japanese art, and it's called Kokodama, and I'm going to pass this out, one on one side of the other. This is one miniature plant in a special growing medium, and they run from $25 to $50 each. And they use suspended in the air. That's how the expense of miniature planting. And the books that I recommend kind of address it a little bit, but once you have these plants, you can propagate from the plants that you already have. And it all is with a leaf. And I do have a sample here to show you how to do that. And I think I'm going to have my lovely assistant, Roberta, you're going to come over here and you're going to keep misting until it comes out from the bottom. And this is when you're going to be misting it this way. That's why it's, for larger plants it's kind of easier to uh, do it water from the bottom. But I have to do it this way initially. So you're going to continue to do this and I'm going to show them about propagation. Careful on the thing, okay. Just keep doing it. Now, this happens to be a plant that I cut off for propagating. So if you see some of these are a little taller and I have them tied or suspended with a floral thin wire. But this is what you cut off as a propagator. And I want to first pass this. I want everyone to see how healthy. So when you're buying succulents, check this out and see how healthy this plant is. In nature, okay, let me give you <laughs> in nature, if this were growing in nature, um, it would keep growing tall. It would not be able to support itself. You can't see the little root. You will when, you, when, you, when I pass this to you. And it falls down on the ground and it roots itself for a new plant. Okay, so that's how sedums propagate themselves. The cactus, like the mammillaria, that I have to cut. So first, I'll pass that out to you. Is it coming out of the bottom yet? <laughs> Not yet. Does everybody see that? Actually, a, a good garden trick to take gloves off, if you use those um, plastic, the latex gloves to garden in, put a little baby powder inside and uh, they'll come off pretty easy because I grabbed a wrong pair. I grabbed my daughter's size. I have the large ones. Can you see that? Can you see how healthy the leaf is? It, it's just, I don't use any leaf shine or anything. They're naturally healthy from the nutrients that I feed it. I, either I didn't quite get, where do you cut this from? Oh, I cut this from my plants. Okay. Right, or if you buy a plant, this is how you would cut it to propagate it. Okay. Okay? Can, Can you it see that? small like this until you plant it? I mean, when you plant it? Or? You will, eventually. When you buy it, whoops, when you buy it from the store, they're going to be much larger. Now, what you do in propagation is you're going to twist the leaf off. See the leaf? You put this on the growing medium. You water it. You mist it in and you put it under light or in a bright window in a small container and you just twist them off. Just like this. Just the leaf. And this is how you propagate succulents. Sedum succulents. This is how you do it. But I'll pass it so you could kind of see this. Of course I took the one with the root off. But you see? You let this actually harden off for a day or two and then you um, can put this on the soil and it will develop a root. Okay, it'll develop a root. So, this is in propagation. Okay, 
I think it's coming out. Not yet? Nope. Okay. Well, whoever gets this will continue to do this. Let me wipe the container off. That's fine, Roberta. It's wet enough. It's heavy enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean my container so that I can... Huh? It's too wet already. It's too wet? Yep. Okay. And I do have a cloth here, too. Okay. Let me get... I'm going to temp... I am going to glue the furniture on. When you like the way the furniture is or if it unglues, then you could always put hot glue and it'll be more permanent. But I like to work with Aileen's glue. This is going to stay on for a good six months or so. Um, you get this at any craft store. It's a real, real tacky glue. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this on the legs of the chair. Okay. So we want, we'll have this chair facing you, okay, and you of course have to have a table. So I didn't want to stand here with a hot glue gun. Okay, so here's your table, and we have the other chair that's going to face the other way. You can buy this little furniture. Uh, you know, Wanamaker's really specializes in little furniture, fairy furniture, miniature furniture. Oops. Can they go on a coffee table? If you have a supplemental light on it, absolutely. Oh, Joe, just like, do you see my little vignette there? Uh, I have a little table. Yeah, that in the window. And I, it's no window. Oh, but the no window. Oh, the curtain one, yeah. That one has, but did you see the one with the table by itself and has the little yeah. desk lamp? Okay. You could put that in a hallway. You could put it in a dark room. As long as this arc lamp is all that you're going to need for light. That's it. So you definitely have to have the light. You have to have some kind of light. You do. Yes. It's so pretty you can make a centerpiece off it. Absolutely. Absolutely. As long as you have a light. And you keep the light on. And, oh, let me. I found these cute little sparkly flowers. And they're going to be our little pathway. We're going to do one here. And it does have its own stick so hopefully it'll stick. Does Michael sell all those? Well, Michaels, Hobby Lobby, Wanamakers, uh, you're just going to have so much fun. So much fun looking for all these little things here. So if you don't like the way I put things, you can do it yourself. Because this is just kind of a temporary glue. Although it's a really a good glue. And then I'm going to get some stones on the other side to balance it. And I'm using the rocks, you know, the, they come clear and black. These happen to be a little gold rock. And I'm going to put this on this side. Drop it down. Okay. So these are good to uh, pack one, not pass, to give as a gift to someone. Oh, yes. If you do buy one, I do have little gift boxes for them, too. This is a wonderful gift. It, it really is. Instead of a, a, well, cards can be quite expensive. We were looking at cards, and my goodness, they run at least $10 for a pretty good looking one, a nice one. So for that price, it's well worth it. Okay, I'm going to put an arbor in. 
<laughs> you have to have an arbor and well I can't fit it that way so I'm actually gonna have to fit it this way and it's long enough so as the plants glow, grow you can pick it up now I'm going to put my little pond I'll put it on this side okay because I want to put some um, stones and I'm just going to place them here I'm repeating it what I have on this side and I'll just put a couple here just for fun. Now, if it was, uh, my question, I'm sorry to interrupt. No. But if you, uh, okay, that's completed. If you're going to sell complete something like that, what would you charge for that? This would go somewhere like $150. Okay. Easy. <coughs> Easy. Um, succulent plants, number one, are very expensive. As you could see, one plant sells for $25 on the Kokodama. And this is what they're trying to promote right now. It's an old Japanese art. So, um, you know, for me to get gold furniture was very, very difficult to find, or we could spray paint it. But uh, then you just kind of have to get the metal, the aluminum, and it comes in all different colors. And you could just have fun there and make it yourself. In fact, what I have done um, previously, I bought furniture. I bought the little furniture and I tried to kind of make it, that would be fun for you. You know, just, just buy the little furniture, wired furniture, and try to get the uh, aluminum wire and do it. So this is going to be our grand prize. And Roberta, we're going to, huh? Oh, this is the grand prize. And this is going to be with the light. Although I temporarily put it under here. Wait, let me, let me get my glue. Let me show you the vignette. Okay, this is the gift for the li from the library. This is your gift from the library for their 50th anniversary. Okay. Now I would suggest you get, and you could see how quite heavy this is. Okay, now, so there it is. Underneath. And like you said, this would be just absolutely beautiful, you know, in a hallway or um, I could pick this up on your coffee table. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. They're all lovely gifts. Okay. Do you have the, oh, you've got it. Okay. This is how we're going to do it. This is obviously the last prize. But when your name is called, you're going to have um, a choice of what you want. The other gardens. Yes, you're going to have a choice. So, the first number. Oh, are we going to have, let's have the young man here. Let's have the kids pick out some numbers. Okay, so you're going to pick what garden you'd like. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Let's see. Can I take this one? Yes. All right. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Congratulations. Okay. Sure. <laughs> All right. Is this exciting? Six zero five. All right. Thank you. No, that's the grand prize. That's the last one. Yes. <laughs> I know. I know. It would look so nice on my car. I know. You're going to have to do one then. You're going to have to do one. No, we don't. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. All right. Stay here with me. Oh, 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 oh wait, okay. wait. She'll she'll follow you. She wants to take your picture. There you go. Thank you. How many are left? three. So far before the grand prize. Oh, did you did you did you oh and the shovel. Oh yeah, and, and also the shovel's included. So you could pick the shovel. All right. Yes, you're gonna take the shovel. Yes. <laughs> Right. Dad wants the shovel. Dad wants the shovel. You're gonna be a little bit of a picture. Alright, you ready? Yeah, I think this is good. Let's see. We'll get you and Dad. Even Dad. Well, that's a pretty long shovel as it turns out. I gotta move it up. Hold it up. Thank you. Okay. I'm having a little trouble with there's so much light the camera keeps yeah. adjusting. Okay. Six zero three two. Six zero three two. Six zero three two. Okay, hon. <laughs> now we're down to the small ones. Okay, the cube garden. There you go. Oh. Oh, picture, picture. <laughs> Okay, and she's going to pick one. Five, nine, four. Five, nine, four. Oh, oh. <laughs> okay. All right, and the itty teeny weeny. The teeny weeny. The teeny weeny. Okay, and you get the drip tray with it too. There's a drip tray. All right, now the drum roll. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, Patty's gonna pick it. All right, Patty. Very exciting Give the last two girls one. Okay. From the library. I'll okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. The little girls that are at the end, why don't you come forward here? Come up. Come up. You at the end there? Come up. Come up. Okay. Pick out what you want. The library's buying this for you. We're so glad. Okay. Wait. I'm going to get you a little gift box. Thank you for coming. Here's your gift box, and let's give you, you like this one? Okay, there's your gift box for gift from the library. Thank Patty. Okay, okay, thank you so much for coming. If you want to get the nutrients, if you want to buy some for gifts, you can now. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you. I wanted to see a little kit here. Oh, yeah.